Greetings, and welcome to episode 30. In today's episode, we'll be discussing lifting the veil, and I'll explain what that means. So if we're ready, let's get started. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, what do I mean by lifting the veil? Quite simply put, I mean putting an end to magical thinking. I don't mean that we're going to shift into another dimension or reality. Kind of a different reality, but only so far as the tiny shift in perception that will occur. And I'll explain what I mean by magical thinking. I mean, it's okay to have an open mind, but not so open that your brain falls out. And magical thinking sometimes requires the great act of suspension of disbelief, the same as some of the more well-known religions. So we're going to put an end to that. Lately, and it's not even lately, this has been going ongoing for the last 50 or so years. It's just not come into the mainstream until recently. There's an entire field of science dedicated to it, what we call the spiritual path, called noetics. So what I'm putting forward to you is that there is no such thing as magic. Now, don't get me wrong. I am not saying that there are not wonders here to discover. And I am not saying that miracles don't exist. I am simply saying there's no such thing as magic. It's all science. The spiritual path, you have to, you have to remember. The spiritual path, what we consider the spiritual path, the, the road to enlightenment, this wasn't just a, 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 a seeker's game back in the day. In ancient times, this was a way of life. We're talking pre-Christianity. This was a way of life. This wasn't just uh, an earnest seeker trying to achieve enlightenment. This is, this, it was a way of life. Everyone in the particular society knew these things. It was that the exception to the rule then was people that didn't know it. So now that after thousands of years and it's transmitted to us through myths and legends, we develop that magical thinking. And I hate to say magic doesn't exist because even knowing that, and knowing what I know and learning what I've learned and even having my abilities, it still looks and feels like magic. <laughs> but it's not magic, it's science. And this has nothing to do with faith. This just has to do with the small little tweak to your own perception that these things that we find on this path to enlightenment were set about as a means to achieve and maintain an evolutionary state. With these techniques we evolve as a species. Or nowadays the path is more solitary and you, you look for those that are walking in the same direction. But before it was the entire society. It was the whole species. Or at least the, uh, the whole species in certain parts of the world, which if you look, it was pretty much the whole world. You had the Druids in England, you've got the Tibetans, the Egyptians. <laughs> it's, it's almost endless where this knowledge comes from. All over the globe, literally. So you can say that it was a path of evolution for an entire species. Now it's a solitary event. Because 
and it's not so solitary that like I said, you, you're not going to look for those that are walking in the same direction. Not only is that a good thing, but I encourage that. But the path you are walking is your own. And it is a, in this day and age, in the information age where everyone's connected and everyone's got an opinion, your path is your own. Simply because right now, these are just really good ideas until it catches on and we don't have to go look for the information and it's just readily available it's just a good idea but evolution is always a good idea I mean look at these bad boys <laughs> so yeah these aren't magic but to a creature that doesn't have them they'll be like whoa look what he can do <laughs> <laughs> these things are awesome when you can control your breathing and your emotional frequency to the point where you can shift into another plane that's not magic that's science because they've built machines that can do it it doesn't make it magic because you can do it it was magic already from the from the truest sense of it who was it that said uh any sufficiently evolved technology is indistinguishable from magic so and that also it also proves that there's nothing you can do with a machine that you can't do with the heart and mind so if you can do it with a machine if it's a machine we call it technology we call it science how come when we can do it here the mind and the heart how come then it's called magic why is it not still called technology and science and it keeps us bound calling it magic because people want personal power now they want personal power and they want power over others and I'm gonna use magic to do it and blah 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 blah, blah and then they plateau and they do it to themselves I wanna get here when the learning curve is eternal there's no point where you're gonna be done learning none so when you seek power you seek a certain thing that certain thing is here and then you're gonna stay there and enjoy that thing because there's no point in fighting for X amount of however long it took you to get there and just bypass it and keep going that's evolution if you just bypass and keep going Ooh, excuse me because if you keep going it's always going to get better the tri I mean the parlor tricks come with the alignment <clears throat> enlightenment isn't about parlor tricks neither is evolution I mean that as you evolve you're going to notice you can wow certain things are easier I can do certain things oh look I can bend spoons I can move that cup with my brain Wh whatever it is these things will come with enlightenment well that enlightenment that you're seeking is really just a path of evolution and then some of us get stuck at some of the parlor tricks oh I've, I learned a really good parlor trick it's just a parlor trick keep going it's not magic that word it keeps us bound and yes we've got our mythology and this and that and our old stories of wizards and, and dragons and whatnot but think about it you got the old mythology you got wizards and sorcerers and then you've got Native American mythology they got medicine men and shamans and you go down to South America and they have medicine men and shamans so it seems to me that we devolved sufficiently that in large groups of people only one or two of us one or two of us had these abilities naturally but instead of teaching it to everyone they just stood up as the magician or the wizard or the sorcerer or the shaman or the medicine man it is my belief that it was supposed to be their job to teach it to the rest of the people 
You teach 10 people, and then those 10 people go teach 10 people. Or even you teach one person, and then that one person teaches one person. And if you continue teaching one person at a time, and each time you teach a person, you've taught a person, and then the person you taught keeps doing that, and then the person, the people they teach keep doing that, and the people I've taught keep doing that, and so on. Eventually, you'll hit the hundredth monkey mark real quick. And what I mean by hundredth monkey, it's said that once an idea reaches a point of saturation within a culture, it'll spread globally. Not... I can't say globally just because there's so many language barriers, but say we all spoke the same language on this planet with the subtle variations of area dialect. If we all spoke the same language, an idea would reach a point of saturation in a localized area and then poof, once it hits that point of saturation, it would spread all over the world. Now, within a confined culture, confined only by, say, language barrier, and not even com uh, confined by, what I mean by confined by language barrier, everyone within that culture speaks the same dialect. Even if it's a subset of that dialect, they still speak that dialect. So there's a resonance there. But Seth, one person has an idea, and he tells a bunch of people, and those people tell a bunch of people there's a point of saturation where it just becomes common sense and it'll just spread to everybody else scientific fact scientific fact it's called the hundredth monkey effect so that's where I got that <clears throat> so you've got this what is right now still just a good idea but with seven billion people on a planet when is that point of saturation is it at a hundred thousand at a million at a hundred million because in the face of seven billion a hundred million isn't really that much <laughs> that's like a seventh <laughs> I mean how much honestly how much of a population has to be walking a path and walking appropriately but then I could also or I could also argue against myself saying that a lot of these people that are walking the path nowadays had no introduction to it they just were born and became curious for some reason they just knew something wasn't right with the world and they began looking for what was right and when they found what we call the spiritual path, they found it. That could, in some way, be the hundredth monkey effect in effect. Perhaps we've already reached the point of saturation. Which would be delightful, but with seven billion people on the planet, those wheels now turn much more slowly what in a small culture would be a wildfire spreading very fast is just a slow burn trying to build up momentum but until these ideas become so mainstream that you don't have to look for the information I mean you don't have to look for Christianity people will walk up and hand it to you you don't have to look for Judaism. People will proudly wear their thing, their, 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 their religion. And it's in the news all the time. Same with Islam. There's a certain dress. And it's in the news all the time. The spiritual path, not so much. I mean, the, there's information everywhere. But it's not so readily available as Christianity, Islam, Judaism. Not even Buddhism or Taoism, these things are still more readily available because it's almost as though they want you to know these things are there but they don't want you to know exactly what's in it because some religions work that some paths work that 
Oh yeah, you can join the path, but you're not going to learn anything substantial till you've been there for a while and prove you you really really want to be there. That what is that called? Meritism? No, not exactly. That's like reward. I guess it kind of is a reward. Stick around and we'll teach you the good stuff. Or donate X amount of money and we'll teach you the good stuff. No, there is no path to enlightenment that requires any type of money unless you personally decide you want to purchase a book or go see a speaker. That is your decision to make. But the path is free. And there's nothing you can find in a book that you can't meditate on and find the answer for it. And they say, well, that's bullshit. Well, really? Because the Buddha <laughs> found all his answers through meditation. And then people wrote books about it. So don't tell me it's not possible. <laughs> so, magic and the fact that there is none. And like I said, this does not mean there isn't wonders and that there are not miracles. That means that it's not magic. It doesn't ever take away the, oh wow, that's, that's amazing. It'll never take that away from me. But knowing that it isn't magic and understanding that it isn't magic and viewing it as a tool toward evolution is a more adult view of the path. And I, when I say adult view, holding on to it as magic, to me, has the exact same effect as clinging to Christianity as though every word in the Bible was supposed to have a literal meaning. Jonah and the whale. Really? A whale really ate a dude? I'm not feeling that. <laughs> we could get into that. That's that's a whole other discussion. But and that anything. Who was it? it? Was Bootsy Collins that said anyone can walk on water if they know where the rocks are? Ha <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> And that's the truth. Magic. It is not magic. Just because it's wonderful. Pleasing to the eyes, pleasing to the mind, makes you giddy to do it or think about it, doesn't make it magic. What You know what makes it magic? Being on a path of evolution. Learning a proper technique. And like I said, with every technique comes a little parlor trick. Sometimes more than one parlor trick from one, from each different technique. So you've learned these techniques and you've won these parlor tricks. And then what makes it magic is when you pretend that you're the only one that can ever do it. And look what I can do. That's what makes it magic. When you go and teach that everyone can do it, and here let me show you, then it's science. That's, that, that's the same of I walk up and say, look what I can do. And everyone says, ooh, can I see it? No, that's mine. No one can do this but me. That's magic. It's science when I walk up and say, look what I can do. And I brought one for all of you. <laughs> that's science. <laughs> or more to the point, I brought materials and blueprints for all of you. <laughs> that's science. When you make it occult, then it's magic. Ooh, the dark arts. If people really knew what the term black magic meant, or the dark arts, it didn't mean that the things were inherently evil. It meant that they learned these things from black people. And that's a fact. And you can go look that up. <laughs> the dark ages? Yeah. The dark ages they're referring to was when the Moors were in charge in Europe. <laughs> That's the dark ages. It's funny how a tiny little word can shift your perception like magic. It's not magic. 
it's if it does not if you cannot fit it into a scientific discipline and I don't mean like quantum physics or blah 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 if you cannot attribute it to s some scientific reality I can attribute meditation the chakras all of them not just the main seven but all 73 chakras can be attributed scientifically proper diet all of that stuff can be attributed scientifically even the parlor tricks associated with each level you learn along the path can be somehow attributed to science but then you read some of these religious books and you're like wow you can't attribute some of this stuff to science but let me l let me let me switch it back for a second Christianity walking on water levitation it can be done now Jesus died and then rose from the dead now I'm not feeling the rose from the dead but there are stories that I have heard that say that Jesus wasn't dead when they took him and put him in that tomb and if he can levitate to walk on water I bet he can levitate just enough to move a stone to get out of that hole in the ground <laughs> makes you wonder it's still not magic but it attributes a little bit of believability to a story that is taken literally but that's only if you want to view it literally and I'm not even going to get into that I'm just getting into the putting away with the magical thinking because even if you shift your perception on just a few of these biblical stories and remove the magic you can see what he was actually trying to teach and you can see what we're actually trying to learn now is almost identical identical to what he was teaching them what he was teaching them then but everyone had that magical thinking going on and people still in 2014 <laughs> 2000 years later still have that magical thinking going on and the minute I discovered it it kinda makes you go oh there's no magic and at the same time makes you feel a little bit you know, embarrassed because, well, I actually thought there was magic. And then it makes you feel good to know that I'm headed in the right direction. But on the same token, there's no magic. Hmm. <laughs> when it hit, it hit me. Well, I mean, when it really, I mean, yeah, you play around with it, but when it hits you, there really is no such thing as magic, but it doesn't diminish the path the things you've learned, none of it. That's why no one believes in the path now. That's why no one believes in religion now. Because nobody believes in magic. You don't have to believe in magic. But having the heart, that childlike heart and open mind, go hand in hand with walking the spiritual path. But like I said earlier, you can't have such an open mind that your brain falls out keep your wits about you keep your feet on the ground because let's face it you can reach up and touch the stars when we get out in space think we're out in space no one ever seen no one, no one thinks about that we're out in space we're on a planet out in space we're out in space no, but I mean when we leave the planet. Why do we ever need to leave the planet? We don't even know everything that goes on on this planet. We don't even know what goes on in our own bodies. We we have plenty to do right here. <laughs> Let's take care of that first and then maybe go see. <laughs> hmm. Science. Science. I want to poof my hair up like that guy on History Channel. Science. <laughs> <coughs> These things are real. Telling you it's not magic, telling you there's no such thing as magic doesn't make it less real. 
doesn't make it so no suddenly I can't achieve it the only thing that it does when I tell you it's not magic the only thing it could possibly do is kill your incentive because what are you gonna do oh magic exists magic exists what are you gonna do when everyone's magic what does that guy say in that movie, The Incredibles? Once everyone's magic, no one will be. <laughs> so why don't we put away the magical thinking ahead of time so we're not so disappointed when everyone's magic? <laughs> it is a little bit of a disappointment. But that's all it is. If finding out that it's not really magic kills your incentive. Like, let me give you an example. I've been playing bass guitar since I was 17 years old. I'm 40 now. I got pretty goddamn good at it. But I started playing with a guy who was just technically brilliant. And he actually taught me how to play. Scales, modes, you name it. The whole nine yards. And I got good. And then one day I sat down because I was accustomed to being able to write music, not just play other people's music. I sat down to write a song and... Bleh! And then it all came flooded in, flooding in how easy it was to play the guitar. And I thought about every song I'd ever heard and how easy it was what they were playing. And then it occurred to me, playing bass guitar was only fun when I thought it was magic. Playing bass guitar was only fun for me when I thought it was something difficult that nobody else could do or that it was hard to break in on. Once you learn how easy it is, you'll be like, whoa, right on. But it killed it for me. Because it wasn't fun anymore. It was fun when it was magic. Ha ha! Zap! Look what I can do. And now it's, oh, anyone can do this. It's not a great thing. So I understand the need to call it magic and get people interested and involved. But eventually you're going to hit that wall where you figure out that there's no such thing as magic. And so I'm telling you, before you hit the wall, and you will, and this might cause it, there's no such thing as magic. There are still wonders, and there are still miracles, and you will still have that sense of awe, but that doesn't mean you need to say magic. Just like, I still hear music that, to me, puts me in a sense of awe. There's a new band going around nowadays called Royal Blood, and the band consists of a drummer, and the bass player and they are bad assed and it leaves me in a sense of awe and I, it's, it's a wonder but it's not magic because I know how to play I know what they're doing but yeah that's what killed bass guitar for me that's what killed playing any type of music the only part of music that still holds any magic to me <laughs> or for me as when I should say excuse me is singing because I am the instrument you cannot dispel that magic because I still it'll always fascinate me how I can get the tones and the pitch and the inflection from my own body it's different when you're got to manipulate it with your fingers it's something totally different because you don't have that luxury when you're singing Likewise, when you mess up playing guitar, you can disguise that. You screw up singing, you just screwed up singing. <laughs> oh, but I, it is not my intention to screw up the path for you. Oh, it's not interesting anymore because I figured out it's not magic. There is no such thing as magic. Wiccans, true Wiccans, with their nature magic, botanists and healers that's what they're supposed to be if they're running around you cursing people with nature magic yeah that's yeah they'll see <laughs> they're part of the poison of the earth at that point botanists and healers that's not to say all pagans just wiccans and there's several different realms of pagans 
Not all pagans are Wiccan. But this all, all of this knowledge stems from the same source. And people like to say, I saw a website the other day, it was a, a Wiccan website, that said, it was something about that new Moses movie coming out. It said, Egyptians weren't white, but they weren't black either. And I was like, do tell. <laughs> As you practice their black magic. <laughs> Do tell indeed. No, they were Arabs after they were black. <laughs> and it was about that time, as the Hebrews were dethroned from Kemet, that the Arabs took over. And after a while, it was right around the Christianity when Christianity was founded as an actual religion thanks to Rome and Constantine and all that that's when this everything started to change and you have what I want to say the 1500s or 1300s you have Islam comes up and Islam was founded by converted or, 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 or former Jews and it was vastly populated by former Jews because of the advent of Christianity it was too closely aligned to Judaism and paganism and Juda Judaism was against paganism Judaism says one God whereas paganism says many and Christianity says no no they're not all gods you have one God and you have angels and demons uh -huh. <laughs> <clears throat> essentially it's all right it's just perceived wrong or taught wrong you just you got to have that tweak in perception it's not magic there's no such thing as magic and getting into the history of where it comes from that's not even important because I'm not even I'm not trying to get into the history lessons if you have questions about that I can answer them because I've been studying backwards to find out most most historians will work from the back and move to modern age I've been working from here backwards to figure out what went wrong when the good guys became the bad guys and why and I think I have found it but that is for a different time and different discussion and not for my channel <laughs> there are teachers on the internet or people you can go see speak that do touch base with these things my thing is to teach the path itself its origins in this day and age oh it was black people oh it was white people oh it was the Jews they were unimportant they all teach the same thing nowadays vastly unimportant the path is all that matters and if you get into where the these 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 ways of life, I could say these paths of evolution. If you get into the who started it, where did it come from? It's it gets a little racist for me, so I stay out of it. All that's mattering to me right now is the path itself. Until it is shown to me that racism is the way to go which it'll probably, I'm 40, it'll probably never happen because white people do something bad, black people do something bad, Mexican people do something bad. Those people are assholes. The rest of the race, it's up to them to prove whether or not they're assholes or not. And I'm not going to let some type of magical thinking say, well, God said everyone but those people. No, that's magical thought. The universe did not pick a favorite. The universe has never picked a favorite and will not pick a favorite. Why? Because it's not magic. It's science. It's a path of evolution. The universe discovering itself through each one of us, through our slightly different point of view and perspective. And that's okay. Just remember there is no such thing as magic don't let that kill your 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 drive and lust for enlightenment 
because it really is a path of evolution and we all deserve to get to the next level so don't give up just because you're viewing it with a more pragmatic eye <laughs> anyway we're getting on past the 30 minute mark and I really like this episode I was thinking about this episode yesterday when I was trying to think up an episode and I, I figured it was about time to elaborate on certain things and that was one of the things anyway if you have liked this video if you've enjoyed it please click the like button you can favorite this video if you would like and if you would like to keep coming back and get more information or you just like the sound of my voice then go ahead and subscribe please by all means subscribe <laughs> but until next time you hang in there